Hi everyone, <laughs> how are you? Um, okay, what I did was I brought a bunch of books to show you like uh, different kinds, different types. But basically, there's two different two two types. One is Japanese binding, which is this, um, where the thread is like on the outside of the book, and all the pages are trimmed flush, and there is really no hard cover, and the paper is very thin and very flexible. Uh, so that's Japanese binding. In, in, um, right, so in Western binding, what you have is like the opposite, it's like a real philosophical thing. So, so the book hides everything. So all the stitching is on the spine. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I need a screen here. That's the next object. Um, that's the center. That's good. Um, so okay um, so basically that's like all there is to it in terms of like just big philosophical differences and um, and the thread you don't see except you see it in um, you know in the middle of the signature okay so this book is probably I don't know a hundred years old but my friend Jack has one that's like from the 17th century and it, you know it still opens up but there you go so, um, and you can see a little bit of the glue sipping through there. Um, and then, so you have signatures, you have the thread, you have backing, you have these which are called end sheets, and then you have the cover. In this case, it's a soft, fairly soft cover, but um, oftentimes it's a hardback. Okay? So where you can print on the paper, and then you can use that paper to wrap around the uh, around the plates and um, and since I have this I'll just show you I don't know if you can see it but um, the book is broken here so what happens is I can see the back I mean I can see the edge and what's really neat is that the printer or the designer wrote each signature on the spine here and they put a little mark so you can see they're like in a row, nicely in a row. So that would tell you that the signatures are in the right, um, in the right order. Okay. Um, this book is actually sewn different. It's, it's done with this library stitching, which is on the top. Uh, you can see it there. So that will never come apart, although the back did. Um, so signatures. So basically, you guys, if you use InDesign, there is that little button that says booklet or something like that, or in position booklet, right? Booklet. booklet, yeah. So what the booklet does is figure out for you, well, all your pages are going to be. So if a book is, um, you know, say this big, well, they wouldn't print each page one by one, right? What they would do is they would print it like this. You might have seen this. Okay, so these are um, eight pages on one side and eight pages on the other side, right? That's called a signature. And I don't know why it's called a signature. Probably because something about sign, um, mark, maybe. Um, and so, and then the binder folds that into signatures, and then, the, and then they get stitched together, right? And so in the olden days, when you bought a book, it might be just like this book, where the pages are not actually open yet, you know, which is kind of cool. It's like you'll be the first person to read that book. Um, and nowadays, they try to simulate that sometimes, you know, like the Harry Potter books, where the, the edges of the pages are um, a little bit, you know, um, it's called deco edge, okay? So, so in your book, if you want, you can decide. We can either trim it, right? We can go with the guillotine, and we can cut it, and make it, you know, perfectly straight. Or you can just uh, open them up by hand with like a blunt blade, okay, like a steel ruler. Um, so that's that's really it. We have signatures, and you bind them, and then you can get you know creative about different. I just brought some samples here. Um, this one, in addition to having the thread, has a, a band that would make the book a lot stronger. And this band could be like a, a rope. And in the old books, where you see like the the edges on the spine, you know, sticking out. Okay, so that's the rope.
that's holding the thread um, that's going into the board. In this case, it's a bend, but in that case, it's a rope. Um, so I just wanted to show you this. This, uh, this was done, I think back at RISD, this is a kind of binding called concertina binding. Um, I, I, I was TA for a class called Concrete Books, which has nothing to do with you know, the construction stuff, but um, it's about making books that like look like their subject, if that explains it. Um, and then, um, and then this just shows you how you do the backing. Although, I can't really see it, okay. Although in this case, I was doing this for a Japanese binding, so it was kind of a hybrid. I was making a hardcover for a Japanese style binding. So that's how you would place your boards. Um, then you would turn the edges, and then you would put the final piece on top, okay? So I'm just going to quickly show all the samples that I have, and then we'll go and start sewing. Um, I brought a book, which is a date book, and it's covered with, uh, can't really see it, but it's calf skin. See the hair? It's nice. It feels really nice. Um, I didn't kill the cow. <laughs> uh, so you can use pretty much anything. And of course, you know, they use parchment, right? You know, whatever, how high or something. Uh, so that's Babar. Uh, this one is called a clamshell book. So it's like a box. And you do it exactly the size of the book, right? That fits perfectly. And then the other side kind of closes on it perfectly. And if you hear that nice, like, little air forcing itself out, that's, like, perfect. Okay, you can kind of hear it. And what I did was I took a magazine. There used to be a magazine called Upper and Lower, Ma Upper and Lower Case. Uh, which is all about type, and I just took the magazine. The magazine was big, and I just folded the sheets, and I rebound it. So now in my book, there's pages that go up and down. Okay. I didn't actually like the magazine at that time. I was kind of a stuck-up guy, but, uh, but it's actually, this came out pretty nice. And then I picked, I don't know, just some stuff I found maybe in another magazine for my uh, end sheets. All right. So it's a useless book, but, you know, <laughs> kind of nice. Um, so this box is a little bit like when we're going to make a box for the cards that has a little bit of the construction. It's actually more elaborate. The basic trick about when you make a box is that when you make a book, you're going to be cutting off parts and throwing them away. In a box, you actually need more, so you don't cut away anything. Um, and then, just to contrast um, sewn books or, or um, Smythe-bound books, sometimes they're called, maybe from a person who invented a machine to sew them by hand, uh, uh, sew, sew them by machine, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's Smythe-bound, uh, stitched by hand. And then you have what's called perfect binding, okay, which is the cheap way of doing it. You just cut every, you cut all the sides. Well, actually, what you do is you cut this side first, you put the glue, and then you cut the other sides. And it's called perfect binding, and it's the perfect misnomer because with time, the glue will break up. So this is a book by John Cage, who I'm sure actually would appreciate that because uh, what I do is I just like to break the book. Okay? So the glue just gets brittle. All right? So magazines, you know, like Vanity Fair is perfect bound because, you know, you're only going to use it for a month. Okay, there you go. Um, industrial glues are actually um, very strong and they probably have animal stuff in them. And they're supposed to withstand like incredible temperature and humidity variations, but sooner or later, if it's perfect bound, it's going to fall apart. Uh, what they do is to make it last longer, they cut through the edge here to make the glue stick through, which they didn't do it here. So, um, okay, so that's perfect bound. So I haven't folded my sheets yet, so. While I do that, why don't you guys get a needle from here and get a uh, thread. And I have thread, and it's um, linen thread. And actually, I, did, I don't have my... Um, you can take a block of beeswax to like run it through and make it like really nice and smooth and will last longer. So, um, so what you need is get some thread, and you need... 
um, as many times as you have signatures. So count, you know, count like this once, twice, three times, and so forth. Okay? So you need that plus a little bit more. So maybe a couple of more signatures. Okay? Because we don't want to have to make knots. Okay? Um, so why don't you pass these around? Oh, do you have a uh, you guys have something to cut? Or scissors? Okay. Um, and then also get uh, a needle. Okay, so my needles are better because they're blunt, so they don't rip the paper. Um, but you could use a uh, you could use a uh, you know a regular needle if you if you had to. But these are just better. Okay, so why don't you pass these around also? Uh, I hope we have enough. Did you guys bring your own? Uh, if there's not enough, you can. Um... You're not gonna make one? No, you have to make one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's. I'm not gonna do this again. This is this is, this is it. All right, let me get some more. Um, so actually, it's five more. And um, I do have enough. It's just that the rest are not book binding needles. Okay. My mom would be proud of I love it. I still think it should be fine. They're going around. Oh, but but if again, if you can. If there's not enough for everybody, I've got regular needles. They're not as good, but... Um. They're all the same. They're all the same. Those are all bookbinding ones, yeah, so... But again, okay, if you, if you absolutely run out, there's some more. I'm sure they need. Who, who oh, needs needles? Everybody? Okay, great. Okay, everybody has one? Okay, so... Oh, actually, we need to do something else before we do that. Um, very important. This is going to take a little time. Uh, let me um, let me fold my sheets real quick so guys this is a bond folder I think I showed it before very useful tool you should get one um, you kind of absolutely need one to do the cover for this you could just be using your fingers but your, your uh... oh actually one thing that I didn't show which is very important uh, is wood, I mean, uh, paper grain. So, paper is made, you know, in a big machine, like a gigantic plant, and it moves down this, like, bed of water that gets drier and drier. So because of that, the fibers on the paper are going to align themselves in a certain direction, okay? So now, that wouldn't happen if you made paper by hand, because that would be random, right? But because of this, the grain of the paper is actually the direction in which the paper is going to be stronger. Okay, that's also the way, the direction you would, li you would like your, your folds to be. That's not always possible, so we're not really paying too much attention to that now. But I'll just show you a quick trick to see which way the, the, uh, the grain is going, okay? So what you do is you cut a piece of paper going one direction, right? And then I'm going to mark it this way. And I'm going to cut two strips in opposite directions. And then I'm going to make them the same length. And I don't know if I can show this from this angle, but basically, let's see what happens. So when I flip it, one of them is like dangling, right? The other one is not. So what's happening is the one that's under now, the fibers are going the length of the piece. 
the, the one that's under now, the fibers are going the short end of the piece. Okay? It's like if you took a mat, like a, like a straw mat, and you try to hold it by, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the same principle. So what I, what I know then is that my paper, this is the one, the one underneath, is going, is actually going the opposite way from what I had marked it. So it's actually going this way. So I put this back, right? I put that back and now I know that the fiber is going this direction. So what that means is that ideally, what I want to do is I want to fold my paper going this way. Okay, you want to have the fold going with the grain because it doesn't crease the paper. That way it's a lot stronger and your pages are not going to be all like crazy. Um, so, so when a designer had to like spec a book, in theory, he should know the size of the sheet that the book is going to be printed from. He's going to know, you know, which way the folds are going to go and he's going to make sure that the folds are going with the grain. In this case, I'm not actually quite so sure because I, I see there's quite a bit of creases there, so the feeling is going the opposite way. But for this one, we're not going to worry about it, okay? Um, and that's true for your back, for your cover too. When we do the cover, we want the, um, we want the chipboard to go this way, okay? All right, so now I just need five minutes to fold all my sheets. And, and ideally when you fold your sheets, especially if you have more than two folds, you want to have your front uh, be open, okay? So I don't know if you have more than two folds. If you have, like all my pages are open here, but you might have these pages that are closed. In that case, put your front uh, with the open uh, page, okay? So just give me a few seconds. Um, and so now, since I have time to spare, I was trying to think of stories to tell, but... <laughs> so that I can keep you guys in focus. And, uh, oh yeah, actually, there was a story about sharing. Uh, because in a way, this is a form of sharing, right? Because I'm teaching you this stuff. And it's from my, um, from the place where I come from. My best friend once, okay, the place where I come from 40, well, I guess 50 years ago, people were not really that rich, but they kind of shared, more or less, whatever little they had. So they, um, there would be people who own like orchards and, uh, you know, kids go and steal, you know, fruit like I did. And so, but there was one guy who didn't want to share at all. So he put a sign up on his apple tree that said, um, in this tree there is one poisoned apple, you know, as a way so the kids would not steal it. So one day my friend saw his little brother going off to the country, to the orchard, with a big syringe. And he said, what the heck are you doing? I said, oh, don't worry, I'm doing something. So he went to the orchard, and he found a tree with a sign that said, you know, in this tree there is one poisoned apple. And he added something to the sign. Well, he also did something else, but he added something to the <laughs> sign that said, and now there are two. <laughs> so that's... That's my little story about sharing. <laughs> so I thought it was very clever. Uh, and then I could tell you the one time when we got caught stealing whatever it was, I can't remember. Oranges probably. And the way you did the loot is you, you know, stuffed it in your shirt, <laughs> right? Which was tucked into your pants. And the reason for that was because if you got caught like we did, it would be real easy to get rid of it. You just like open it up from underneath and all the fruit would you know, fall out. Oh, anyway. You're so, what? My bad influence, yeah. Well, you know, we didn't have anything. We had no, well, I guess by the time I was eight, we bought a TV, but.
we had, you know, we had no movies, we had whatever. It was fun. Okay, so I might have an app now. Um, by the way, what I'm doing now with the paper, with the bone right on the paper, um, actually when we do the cover, we're going to put um, scrap paper too, so that it doesn't get shine, because that's going to make the paper shine and you don't want that. Alright, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm going to call it good. So that's eight. Um, so now we have to do a big job, everyone. We just have to cut. Um, we have to cut with a little saw, a little meter saw, through here to get all our holes. That's where we're going to put the thread. Okay, so we have to do it one by one. Um, and I'll just show you how we do it. We, we take two boards, chip boards, and we put it like that. And uh, if you don't have a, a press, a book press, like I brought, um, which is this thing. Okay. This is actually very handy. You can press your book, you can press leaves. The one thing that's not great is that the pressure is on the corners, so the middle is not going to get really pressed nicely. So ideally, we would have like a book press with a big screw, you know, that presses down really nicely. But this is good for most of the work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my book. Uh, first of all, first I'm going to mark with a pencil. Um, that's something you can do actually already. So what you want to do is put one mark smack in the middle, okay? And then if you want to be really cheap, you could just make two other marks. But we're going to do it a little better. We're going to put four more marks, okay? So the next mark, I'm going to do um, about one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom. And then one in the middle. And I'm not, I'm not measuring now, but I would measure it if I was doing this. Right, okay? So those are my four, my five markings, right? So it's very important you make one in the middle and then you move to the sides, okay? Because that's where you're always going to end up, back in the middle. Um, so now we put this between the, and the idea is you try to be careful so they don't, they don't shift. And I stick it in the, between these things. Oh yeah, I have another story while I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah, because I was trying to think, man, all the preparation, you know, all the work, and it's like, you know, you saw me how long it took me to even get this set up going. Um, and then to make a book, and you know, it's just a book, right? But I was thinking that, let's see, it was uh, early 80s, you know, when, I guess, I don't know, I guess CDs were out already, but, um, oh yeah, I was thinking about playlists, you know, how easy it is to, with the iPod to make somebody a playlist and burn a CD, and I was just recalling this time when I was making this tape for my now wife, and uh, I never actually owned a, re a stereo player, but my friend had really great records. So here I was making a tape, you know, a cassette tape, um, queuing up all these different songs from records, right? Cue the record, lift the arm, you know, set your tape recorder, um, you know, play record, push record, push pause, hit the arm, you know, to go down on the record, fade up the volume on the tape recorder volume, you know, and there it goes, the first song, and then you have to wait for three and a half minutes till the song is done, then you have to you know, as soon as it finished, fade out, right? And then lift up the arm, kill the next song. Here we go to get like, what, 45 minutes of music, right? You can imagine, right? Let's say 20 songs. And I was thinking, man, and, you know, with the iPod. But, you know, it's the kind of thing. It's the same thing with a book. So like for Christmas, if you want to make a really nice present to somebody that you care about, um, this is kind of the equivalent of that tape. You know, you have to spend time to like really um, 
do something nice, and I think the person will appreciate it. And even if they don't, you did something nice. <laughs> and if they don't, of course, then you know what to do, right? Then that's, that's your answer to like, you know, how you feel about that person or how you should feel. Okay, so here we go. So now I'm gonna hold it up in the air just to show you, but you know, really, I should be doing it on the edge of the table here so that I have a firm ground, but it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna zoom that out and I'm just gonna cut it. So it is a little bit spastic here, but um, you can use actually a, a stronger, a, um, a wider, in fact, this is not, I should have brought my other uh, little saw. This one is too thin, so my hole is gonna be too thin. Um, but I have no choice now since I didn't. I mean, I could go to the wood shop and get one. So basically, the, um, the chipboard is going to, you know, give resistance, so you're not going to cut right through. So what you do is you just, just go like that. And I'm going to wiggle it sideways a little bit so I get my holes a little bit bigger. And you can go pretty deep. I mean, it doesn't... Um, so yeah, if you were doing a perfect bound book, if you want it to last longer, you would do this to the, um, to the side, so the glue would like seep through in that, in that slit. So the reason I'm doing this is because that way all the holes are going to be perfectly lining up, right? And you can imagine in a book that has, you know, spreads where there's an image, you know, going from one side to the other that you want this thing to be precise otherwise your image is going to be all, you know messed up okay so that's it okay so let's see if we can get the light yeah there you go okay so those are my my grooves in there um, okay, so since we all need to do this now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and we're going to do this together um, and that way you have your signatures ready and I could even maybe even stop the camera. <laughs>